welcome to the Improve 81 podcast, where we discuss how the Interstate 81 Corridor Improvement Program is enhancing safety and traffic flow along I-81 in Virginia. The CIP, also known as Improve 81, provides funding and guidance for the Virginia Department of Transportation through dozens of construction projects and operational improvements. We already have several active work zones along the corridor. While several more large projects start construction in 2024 and 2025. Now, today we're focused on how VDOT and its contract partners try to make those work zones consistent and safe for crews and for motorists. I'm Ken Slack, Communications Coordinator for the Improve 81 program, and joining me are Dave Covington, VDOT's I 81 program delivery director, and Chris McDonald. Traffic Operations Director for the VDOT Salem District. We'll also be going out into the field to talk with Jamie Robertson, an area construction engineer for the VDOT Stanton District. Chris, I'd like to start with you. The Salem District has I-81 widening projects all the way from Christiansburg to Troutville, about a 32-mile stretch of the interstate, all these back-to-back work zones. So tell us uh, what that's going to be like for drivers over the next several years. Well, drivers will encounter work zones in various stages of construction as they travel throughout the corridor. There will be lots of different construction activities, which will require shoulder closures, lane closures, narrowed lanes, lane shifts, and barriers to protect the workers. And depending on the time of the day, drivers may also experience lane closures necessary to complete the work. Uh, Lane closures will mostly be overnight, though, but there will be necessary traffic impacts associated with the work zones. In order to minimize these impacts, our engineers review locations, traffic volumes, and the type of work to determine the best times to allow the lanes to be closed. Now, Chris, I've heard you say before that uh, drivers encountering these back-to-back work zones want no surprises. Hard to argue that. So tell us what you mean by that. Well, we want our work zones to be consistent throughout the corridor so that drivers know what to expect. We have traffic management plans that are designed for each work zone. Travelers will see standard signs providing guidance on conditions such as closed shoulders, lane shifts, and lane closures. The messages on our standard signs will also be supplemented by digital message signs. Each work zone is unique and will require its own set of signs. However, sign colors, shapes, and messages will be consistent for given conditions. All right, we're hearing that word consistent, consistently. So um, I, I'm going to shift a little bit to Dave here because, uh, you know, Chris mentioned TMP. So tell me a little bit about why it's important. A transportation management plan is a plan that lays out how a contractor will manage traffic through a work zone. There are two primary focal points of a transportation management plan or a TMP. The first is to provide a safe environment for motorists as well as the contractor personnel. The second is to maintain efficient traffic flow through the work zone. The TMP is mostly developed by VDOT, given to a contractor, and they complete it with their their necessary input. But we also have projects where a contractor is working with a designer to complete the design of the project and move on to construction. In those circumstances, the design build team is responsible for developing the TMP along with their, their engineer. But this also requires very close coordination with VDOT because we do want to ensure that the TMPs along the corridor are very consistent and also meet our safety and operational needs. Now, the the TMP that VDOT works with, uh, as well as the contractors, uh, this thing's pretty beefy. The guidance document's uh, well over 100 pages long, but uh, I, I noticed that a big part of that is something like a a catalog of of potential tools and and resources and technology uh, that uh, a particular VDOT district or maybe even a particular project uh, manager can can choose from. So how might we see those specifically on I-81? We developed a what we call a, a TMP guidance document specific to this corridor. The guidance document is a living document, so it allows us to learn from our mistakes or learn from our inefficiencies, uh, learn from things that we didn't foresee, so that over time um, we can make our work zones uh, even better. In order to learn those lessons, though, we have to start before construction starts. Um, data collection is a big part of what we do. So we are right now collecting data along the interstate uh, in the locations where we have projects so that we have a baseline. We understand how the traffic is moving right now. We understand some of the safety issues. Um, We we understand um, how traffic is interacting with each other, um, how the interchanges are working. And that is critical so that not only during but after construction, we can make adjustments to our plan as needed. 
Um, I'll give you a few examples. Uh, you mentioned it's like a catalog of solutions, I guess, or, or strategies. And that's exactly right. For instance, if Bristol District wants to do something that Stanton did and they had success with, there's some information there. And there's also some contact that you know they know who to reach out to to, to get that done. Uh, but some examples of that, um, portable CCTV cameras, these are, you know, closed caption cameras. Uh, we deploy those along the interstate, um, not only during construction, but during normal operations. But they really help us uh, in the construction environment because one of the challenges is recognizing when you have an incident. But having these portable CCTV cameras out there, and some of them are trailer mounted, uh, really helps with our traffic operations center to recognize that we have an incident quickly so we can deploy resources and clear that incident as quickly as possible. What that leads to is the incident response. And, you know, we have pre-planned detour routes. So if we have an incident, we can route traffic onto another pre-planned detour route that already has signs installed, things of that nature. We have to have specific plans in place. And that's what the TMP is. You know, it it tells us how to react in those uh, situations when we do have an incident. The contractors, or maybe even before that, the folks that are with VDOT and the consultants who are going through the design and uh, potential implementation of a project, they're sitting down looking at this catalog, the the word we've used before, and say, let's try this. How might that work? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the biggest things that that we do with emerging technology is look to other states. If if VDOT has not implemented that before, who can we reach out to gauge, you know, how effective it was? When I'm talking about emerging technology, I'll give you an example. Um, Automated queue management. We have sensors along the interstate that can detect how fast traffic is moving. And if it determines that traffic is stopped at a specific location, it sends a message back to one of our digital message signs warning drivers that there's stopped traffic ahead. There's a whole host of solutions out there, and and one of them is is speed feedback signs. They're like a flashing LED sign that kind of lets you know you're you're going a little bit fast in a work zone. You might want to slow down. And, And we've seen positive results from those types of technologies. Now, as we've been talking about the the TMP guidance document, uh, that word consistency has come up again and again, partly because we have, in some areas, back-to-back work zones. Jamie Robertson is an area construction engineer for the VDOT Stanton District, and we caught up with her in Augusta County, where she is overseeing two neighboring projects. All right, so we are, as you might be able to tell from that background noise, along the Interstate 81, actually where it comes together with Interstate 64 in the Stanton area. Now this interchange, this whole part of the 81 corridor gets a lot of congestion uh, because of the uh, the confluence, I guess, of these two interstates. And that's why we have a couple of projects planned here. Um, And I'm joined now by Jamie Robertson, one of VDOT's ACES, Area Construction Engineers. She oversees several projects here in the Stanton District, including a couple of them that are right here as part of the I-81 CIP. So, Jamie, thank you very much for, for being with us. And tell us a little bit about what you have going on right here in this vicinity. Thanks, Ken. I guess the first project I want to talk about is adding a third lane to I-81 into the median. It's going to go from exit 221 to 225 and also includes the widening of five bridges within that area. The project is $100 million. It's expected to officially start in spring 2024. Okay, so that's the, uh, the Stanton area widening and another project right next door to it. The second project is the I-81 Auxiliary Lane, which is pretty much going from exit 221 to 220. The intention of this project is actually to widen Barterbrook Road Bridge so that we can actually get three lanes going southbound on I-81. The project is estimated about $8 million to complete. And just a quick note about auxiliary lanes. They're essentially an extra lane that goes between two interstate exits like for in this case for example if if you're coming from interstate 64 westbound but you're only going to be on i-81 for one exit say getting off at the uh, the loop road around stanton you don't have to mix in and, and try to weave in between the the traffic that's already on 81 so it gives folks a little bit of extra elbow room i guess as they're as they're traveling that short stretch on the interstate now we've been talking throughout this podcast about tmps and and uh and how they help with consistency of work zones Since you've got these two projects back to back, how is the TMP going to help you? TMPs are typically reviewed between construction and traffic during the design phase of a project. The main point is to get an idea of how traffic is going to move in and out of job sites, move around job sites if there's a detour that's needed, or even how to get 
contractors safely in and out of the project without or minimal impact to the general public. Traffic management plans are kind of like the rule base that we follow in construction to see how we actually need to make this project run. If there's problems actually seen during construction that are causing safety or possible conflicts with the general public or for the contractor, then we start tweaking things in the field with different signage, barriers, or traffic control devices to make it safer for everybody. Now you mentioned the general public, uh, the travelers that are out there going through these work zones. What's a, a good message you might want to share with them about uh, you know traveling up and down 81 where you have the possibility, especially as we move into 2024 and 25, multiple work zones, sometimes back to back. It's our job to make sure we minimize the impact going from one work zone to another, making sure it stays in the same lane. Even if it's separated by two miles, we have different rules to follow to try to help the general public. We don't like making people go from one lane to another and kind of do a snake-like effect between different lanes. Um, but the big thing is when we actually get into incidents and we're actually affected I-81 or other parts of the corridor, the biggest thing that I want people to know is when they're detouring, detour into locations that do not affect within the city limits of a place. The traffic control signals, the areas that they go into, are not timed to handle I-81 interstate traffic. The best job is to really detour into locations that are outside of those communities or to stay on 81 because our main purpose on 81 is to get it open as soon as possible. So in other words, follow those detour routes. Uh, don't necessarily follow what your phone tells you to do or what you know, your maybe local knowledge saying, I think I'm going to cut through downtown or whatever. That sometimes creates more problems than it helps. The other thing to pay attention to is we have digital message signs staged throughout the I-81 corridor. Pay attention to those. Use them as notes to yourself as you're driving to get to a place that's the safest. James Amy Robertson, ACE Area Construction Ear for the VDOT Stanton District. I thank you very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you, Ken. Now, Dave, we were talking with uh, Jamie Robertson about I-81 work zones in Stanton and Harrisonburg, and certainly there are some differences between those cities and, say, Bristol or, or Salem or Winchester, but regional and corridor-wide traffic management allows for those differences, right? Yeah, there's a lot of diversity that exists along the I-81 corridor you know, from Winchester all the way down to Bristol. Um, but really, one of the things that is similar are the urban areas. These urban areas are where you get your congestion, you get your, your recurring congestion. And that's where we've really come up with this list of solutions or list of options to develop a, a TMP is really focused at the urban areas. So I, I'll give you an example of an idea that came out of the development of this TMP guidance document and working very closely with, with the folks in the district like Chris, uh, we came up with an idea of a regional TMP approach. So instead of having five major projects that are kind of back to back to back, each have their own individual transportation management plan, uh, we thought it was a good idea to develop the idea of, uh, you know, should we do a regional approach here? So say from Christiansburg to Troutville, where we have this string of major projects that we know are going to be disruptive to traffic, um, can we take a regional approach? Can we come up with strategies that ensure consistency, that also make that entire approximately 32-mile section feel like one work zone rather than five separate work zones? And one of the things that we'll really stress is communication. Communication between contractors, between design teams, so that they understand that there's some specific dates that have to be hit where we might have to have a you know slow roll to set bridge beams or something like that, that the other adjacent projects need to respect that. Um, so that that's really one of the highlights of the regional TMP is to enhance that communication between projects so that we don't have conflicts happening between projects. Maybe this should be uh, our second C word. We have uh, consistency, but communication. I mean, that's a big part of this as well. And it's because we're dealing with sometimes congestion, I guess the third C, not, uh, not only because of construction and uh, work zones, but also incidents. Obviously, the, the, the traffic operation centers, the TOCs, and our incident management coordinators, they, they deal with incidents all the time, whether there are work zones in place or not. But how does, especially a, a work zone for a, for a major project, like a, a seven-mile widening, how does that factor into that? Well, the work zone uh, tends to make it more complex because there might be barrier along the shoulder, nowhere to move the incident to if it's blocking a lane. Um, 
it just makes it more challenging because of the constricted area. It's also more challenging to get the help that they need, whether it be emergency services, towing, what have you. So if we've got a, a construction zone where there is an incident, it might be the difference between, well, we can get one lane through if the construction wasn't in place, and but because it's narrower through there, we might have to do a closure and a detour, and that gets, like Correct. you said, more complicated. Yeah, and, and uh, we don't have access to the shoulder either in many cases. The, the, the traffic operations centers and our safety service patrol operators are constantly monitoring I-81 you know, for disabled incidents and crashes and cargo spills and so forth. So how do these, uh, these traffic management plans help us deal with those kinds of those incidents? Earlier, Dave explained a little bit about how we often learn of incidents through our traffic operations centers. And when we learn of an incident, uh, our first priority is always safety of the travelers that are out there. Uh, in addition to emergency services being called, such as fire and rescue, we also have a role that can impact safety. The plan might be as simple as a safety service patrol setting up temporary traffic control, such as a row of cones and a, a message board and an arrow board or something like that, um, to guide drivers around the scene. Or it might be much more complex, such as the need to divert traffic off the interstate or establish a long-term detour. So it has a full range of, of complexity. We also use our digital message signs in Virginia 511 and work with our communication staff to provide incident information to travelers. The traffic management plans contain the components necessary to keep traffic moving in the event of an incident. Chris McDonald, Dave Covington, thank you for joining me today to share your thoughts on work zone safety and traffic management. Thank you also to Jamie Robertson, who caught up with us in this VDOT Stanton district earlier in this podcast. And I also want to thank the listeners of this Improve 81 podcast. VDOT now has dozens of these productions as well as videos to all help tell the story about what's happening along the I-81 corridor. Check out these videos, podcasts, quarterly newsletters, uh, an interactive map, and a whole lot more resources. They're all at improve81.org. And as always, we wish you safe travels.